So what I'd like to do is really start at kind of the 50,000 foot level um, and talk about some context of why we're in the situation that we are in, as I've had an opportunity to study this, this challenge. So, of course, I'm a military briefer still. I can't get that out of me. There's the agenda. Uh, all right, so I want to start out with the demographics of the population. The HR professionals can understand their demographics, right? Uh, so this chart is a chart that shows the U.S. population, all this side of the room, all you need to know is that the U.S. population is rising, okay? It, it shows from like 1800 to the, the current time, uh, but I think it's something like 321 million, but it's growing. It's, and I'm an engineer, so I like graphs, that's why I put it in there. But it, it, it's a positive slope, okay? More people are being born than, more peop than, than people are dying, so increasing population rate, okay? This chart is a chart that shows population, the, the percentage of the population that serve in the military. So that could be active duty, guard, reserve, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. And really on this chart, all you need to know is it peaked at about 8% in World War II, went down, peaked again for Korea, went down, peaked again in Vietnam, went down, peaked again for Desert Storm, sort of. And now the, the takeaway of this is, and that's for those of you who can't see, it's a, it was about eight, about a little over eight percent during World War II. Now it's less than half a percent of the population. No, so that's good, right? That's good that we are the greatest nation in the world, the most powerful nation in the world. We have the most powerful armed services ever to roam the planet, and you can be sure of that. And we're doing it with the lowest percentage of the population we've ever had in our history. That's good, but that's also potentially kind of dangerous. And, I'm, and if I asked you this question and kind of tried to put this in context, would anyone have guessed that, the, that those are the demographics that we're dealing with? Right? And, and so now let me go on a little bit further and explain some of this stuff. Okay, this is a chart of the demographics of the veteran population. So on the left, it's present day and it's project, projected out 30 years. So there are about 21.2 million veterans alive in the United States. This chart is a declining slope. Over the next 30 years, the, the veteran population is declining, which means, unfortunately, more veterans are dying than we are creating more veterans. And that's a, that, that's a symptom of the previous chart I showed, where our military is so small compared to the population as well, right? What it means also is about 40% of our veterans alive today or World War II and Korea War era veterans, all right? Which makes sense when you look at the bump of the spike in the population with respect to World War II when we mobilize the population. And again, it's great that we don't have to do that and we can still, for the most part, kick the butt of anybody who wants to pick a fight with us. That's good, all right? This chart, I think, is really interesting. And this one is probably about the only one that is, is you really need to chart to see, but I'll explain it hopefully in a way. So the green line is men, the yellow line is women, and on the left it's the 18 to 24 year old demographic now, and on the right it's the 90 year old plus demographic, okay? It's the percentage of the population who are actually veterans. So if you're 90 years old and a man alive today, what's it say, 74%, 74% of your peer group are veterans. The, the interesting, and I think personally unfortunate, I didn't used to think this as a junior officer, the, the numbers for women have been maintained pretty consistently anywhere between 3 and 2% uh, of women are veterans. And I think that is vastly underrepresenting women and the potential we have in women. But so the challenge with this, though, is think about it. When that 18 to 24 year old demographic of men who are 7%, 7% of 18 to 24 year old men are veterans. 90-year-olds, okay. 74%. So guess what happens when that demographic of 18 to 24 become 90? Anybody want to take a guess? The number doesn't really change because when do you become a veteran? When you're 18 to 24. So it's not like you decide, hey, I think I'll become a veteran when I'm 32 years old, right? So as this demographic becomes 90, this chart for our demographics in the U.S., will we'll probably be flat, which is scary, I mean, unless there's a, a big war or something. And again, it's good news for our country, but what that means to you all is fewer and fewer people then know a veteran. You have fewer and fewer cousins, neighbors, uh, you name it, where you 
you actually know a veteran. And so if you don't know a veteran, you haven't walked in their shoes, then there becomes this disconnect. So remember, increasing population, decreasing veteran population, there becomes a gap between the veterans and the society that they serve to protect and defend. And I'm not sure that that's necessarily good. And I'm not trying to make a political statement or anything, but it is what it is. And so you should understand that those are the conditions that exist, okay?